Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Shrek Gaming Citicon video, I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas from both myself and Amy. With any luck at all, you are enjoying the festive season. You've got your eggnog, you've got your Christmas stockings filled, and you're just going to be relaxing as much as possible anyway over the next week or so. And I also wish you a fantastic new year. But despite the fact it is currently Christmas Eve, also known as December the 24th, tech news has not slowed down any. In fact, there are so many new rumours and uh, pieces of tech news which have popped up over the past 24 hours, I have to admit I did do, do a double take when I woke up this morning. So without any further ado, let's start things out first of all with the NVIDIA GeForce. Well-known leaker Tim Apisak on Twitter has shown us a device with 14 compute units, also known as 896 CUDA cores. Now it's possible that this could be the 2050 or the 1150 series of graphics cards. Now my personal opinion on this is it's more likely to be the 1150. After all, just a few days ago, I did cover a rumor that NVIDIA would launch the 1150 and below series of cards. Now these cards would be based upon the Turing architecture, true, but there would be a noticeable difference and that would be of course the lack of ray tracing. So the RTX series of cards, which would for example be the 2070, the 2080, the 2060 and so on, those would all be blessed with ray tracing. They would have of course tensor cores and the other uh, bits and bobs that you would expect from the higher end SKUs, whereas the 2050 and below would not have that. Instead, while they would be based upon the Turing architecture, so you would have certain Turing functionality, for example, the improved cache structure and so on, there would not be ray tracing. At the moment, it's unknown though, whether you would indeed get to see the benefit of the tensor cores. Regardless, Tim Apisak has actually linked a uh, compute score from OpenCL using Geekbench, of course, and we can see that it's getting around 114,000 points uh, for whatever this card's gonna be called. I'm just gonna call it for this video, the 1150. To compare that against the 1050 Ti, that scores around 84,000, 82,000, depending of course on the variant on whether you're getting an overclocked model of the card. So it is definitely a noticeable improvement, but that is the compute score. And whether that translates to games, after all, we have demonstrated here at RGT that of course, well, Turing's just pretty good at compute oriented tasks. So whether that's gonna double the frame rate or whatever for games is unknown. Of course, any card in this particular product tier really is reflective upon the pricing rather than anything else. Oh, and as a slight aside of the NVIDIA news, I've recently had an interview with NVIDIA themselves. This is gonna focus on their entire product stack as well as ray tracing, some other bits and pieces. I'm gonna have another interview with them next year on some other stuff. And I'm also working on an AMD interview and another interview which I can't mention yet because it's kind of early in the planning stages, but it's kind of cool. And now let's move over to some Xbox news. Now this Xbox news is gonna be the quicker of the three pieces that we're covering today by far. And like a lot of Xbox news, it has originated on Furret. Now the website alleges that Microsoft are working on a 4K capable camera, which will launch alongside the next generation of Xboxes. Now I want to stress that from what the sources are telling us of Furret, this is not, this is not another variant of Kinect. Instead, this is gonna be doing webcam-y stuff. Although there are reports that it will actually allow you to sign in with face recognition. Now, whether this is gonna be bundled in with the Xbox Scarlet, whether it's gonna be a separate accessory, which is personally what I believe after the mistakes of Kinect, I don't believe that Microsoft are going to be willing to go through that entire thing again, or whether it's going to be for some select games only, or how Microsoft are gonna handle this and what exact functionality it's gonna have other than like, oh, well, I can do a web chat, it's not known. But it is interesting that Microsoft are doing it. It's interesting though that they are doing development on it because well, a 4K camera's not that new. <laughs> I'm putting that mildly. So the fact that they're actually doing some active development tells me it's not just gonna be a simple camera and there is probably going to be a little bit more tech behind it. And that's why I believe that facial recognition and a few other uh, of the obvious uh, ways they could be implementing this technology are certainly possible. But what else they're gonna be using is unknown right now. I don't believe though that this is gonna be like a connect exact experience. 
And now, the AMD news of the video. And I say it in such a tone because there is so much AMD news that it's just kind of startling. Uh, I'm going to start things out with the Vega side of things. Uh, there's a website, WCCF Tech, which actually alleges that we're going to see the launch of a new Vega card for consumers at CES, which takes place early January. Now, there are some other things that are going to be launching, at least according to the rumors at WCCF Tech, uh, on that date as well. But I want to save that stuff for just a moment because it's going to get really confusing to, mo to move across different product stacks with different products, and it's just going to get way too much. So let's first of all start with the Vega side of stuff. Now, once again, they are alleging that it's going to launch at CES, and a well-known leaker by the name of Kamichi. He is a Japanese user on Twitter. I will try to remember to link him in the video description. If not, you can simply search for him. He is known as K-O-M-A-C-H-I on Twitter. Anyway, he has a couple of interesting leaks regarding the Vega 20 and also possibly some stuff for the uh, upcoming Vegas. Now, he says that there is a... Uh, Nonetheless, PCID has been added, PCI ID has been added, and it seems that Radeon Vega 20 FE seems to be possible. I think it's crazy. Uh, I, I think it's crazy objects like Radeon RX Vega 264 will not come out to flowing water. So he's saying that it's not going to be like some custom cooling thing. He is Japanese, so of course we have Google Translate right there. So it's most likely it's going to be a more like founders edition, more like we've seen from example NVIDIA. But furthermore, he also put out another tweet, and he said that uh, the performance for this card is going to fall between the GTX 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080 Ti, but the pricing is going to be around the 899 to 1300 US dollars. Now, from the wording that I'm seeing here, it seems like this card is not aimed necessarily 100% at gamers. It appears to be more like the Frontier Edition cards. It's aimed at, for lack of a better term, the prosumer market. Now, I find this quite interesting because I was speaking to a source a while ago. This is actually one of those rumors I did not report at the time because, honestly, it was one of those rumors uh, from my source that he wasn't confident enough to tell me 100% what the product was. He did tell me that AMD were working on another Vega card, which he believed was not going to be aimed at the data center, but at like consumers. I actually um, had Amy cover a little bit about that in a recent video because there was more updates concerning that. But I believe that that's probably going to be the case. I believe that this card is not necessarily going to be aimed at gamers. I personally believe that, yes, of course, you could game on it. But I believe in terms of gaming, Navi is what AMD are probably betting their money on. I believe that this card, the Vega 2s or whatever they're going to be called, are going to be a variant of what you see at the data center and probably tweaked. Unfortunately, there is a lot of conflicting information concerning this. So it's really difficult to know 100% what exactly AMD are going to be doing. And the other thing as well is that it's possible that Navi has seen a delay, and this is just, you know, an example of what could have happened, that Navi could have been delayed a quarter, and AMD feel like, well, we can release uh, Vega for, like, the bleeding-edge consumers just to say that we've got a card which appeals to them. I don't think they would do that. I personally believe that, yes, it is for prosumers, but who really knows 100% right now? Now, the same website, WCCF Tech, alleges that we will see a launch, I want to stress that word, launch, of the Ryzen 3000 series processors, the APUs, along with, once again, the Vega cards at CES 2019. So that is just a couple of weeks away, essentially. Now, I have to admit, I have a lot of skepticism here which I'll go into in just a moment. But first of all, I'm going to go through their allegations. So this, of course, will take place during the keynote, which will be held by Dr. Lisa Su. Uh, it's believed that we will see the Picasso series of cards, which a variant of that will be in the Xbox console. From what we understand, it's going to be one of the consoles which is focused on streaming. I actually would not be surprised if that's the case. Picasso has been rumored for so long. I personally believe that it's very possible that that will be one of the products that AMD chooses to launch at CES. There is some confusion, though, according to the sources of whether we're going to see a desktop launch or not. But 
allegedly we're going to see the Ryzen 3000 U series of processors. Now the U of course are the ultra low power and would be primarily aimed at like let's say laptops. Now even those products are kind of confusing because we've had certain rumors which tell us that the 3000 series, the U just to be clear, just to be clear here, are going to be based on the 12 nm process, and other rumors telling us that it's going to be based on the 7 nm process. A lot of the leaked benchmarks and other bits and bobs that have popped up are 12 nm, and then we've seen other reports it's going to be 7 nm. It would be kind of weird though to have the ultra low power on 12 nm when it's almost certain because what AMD have told us, what all the leaks have told us, and just well. Common logic tells us that the desktop variants will be based upon the Zen 2 architecture, which we know is based, of course, on 7nm. So why AMD would choose to segment their product lineups by having the ultra low power, which you would assume would benefit even further with 7nm on the 12nm process is just completely bizarre to me, but there you have it. Kamichi on Twitter has actually decoded an AMD engineering sample processor. Uh, we see the 5 equals ES4 engineering sample 4, D equals desktop, the 010 we don't know, 8 equals the model number, BB equals 65 watts, M equals AM4, 8 is the core count, S equals the cache, so that means 8 times 512 kilobytes, which, well, A confirms the above that it's an 8-core processor, and B also confirms that we see 512 kilobytes level 2 cache, which makes sense with Zen 2 from what we know. The amount of level 3 cache is unknown right now. H2 uh, equals question, 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 which is just the stepping of the processor. And finally, 37 equals either the base or the boost clock. Now that very much goes in line with the conventions we've seen previously. I believe it was the folks over at Canard PC, which originally, uh, way back on the first generation of Zen, which originally decoded how AMD put together those like processor strings. So uh, it, it once again shows us that engineering sample processors are starting to come out into the wild. Unfortunately, of course, we don't know exactly what generation of processor this is or any real details. Now here's the thing, I don't believe that we are going to see a launch at CES 2019, and there are several reasons behind that. The first reason is it would really tick people off. I mean, imagine AMD launches the processor, let's say for the sake of argument, on the 15th of January 2019. You've just bought a processor, let's say the 2700X, at Christmas. That would really tick people off. Three, four months later, six months later, Sure, people can say, well, okay, I've had some good usage out of this CPU, but a couple of weeks or just a week later, mm -mm, I don't think AMD would want to do that. Just from a business sense, it would really tick people off. Now, of course, it's not the biggest reason in the world, but I don't believe they would do that. The second reason is that there hasn't been enough leaks yet concerning the engineering sample processes. I would have expected by now, if we're going to see a launch this close, that there would be like motherboard package shots and something else tangible that would have leaked. For example, like a, a much closer to final production chip uh, results that have appeared online. We've not seen that. Now that doesn't mean that I don't think we're going to see an announcement. I believe we're going to see an announcement. I don't necessarily think that AMD are going to run through every single chip with every single detail, with every single like, you know, to the megahertz detail of the clocks and every other, you know, caveat of the chips, but I do think they're going to give us an overview of what we're going to be expecting for the desktop variants of Zen 2. And there's also another reason as well. Lisa Su, along with AMD, have been pretty clear, although of course plans change all the time, that we're going to see ROM, aka the uh, Epic 2 line of chips, launched before the consumer variants. In other words, AMD right now are focusing all of the chips that they manufacture from the Zen 2 process on ROM because they really want to steer the way the uh, H, uh, sorry, the um, HPC market from Intel because obviously it's rather lucrative and it's worth so much cash, both in mindshare from the perspective of investors, plus of course just raw sales throughput for AMD. It just, well, it just makes sense for them to really prioritize that because it's not like they're competing poorly at the moment with the 2700X. You can make arguments all day long that the 9900K is faster because it is. The 9900K is faster, but it's also way more expensive. It's harder to procure right now. You have more expensive motherboards on top of that. And in the vast majority of games, 
there's not really that much difference. Like, yeah. So my personal opinion is that AMD don't feel as much pressure on the desktop side of things right now. That's not to say that they don't want to compete, but I do believe that we're going to see a launch later than this. I don't believe that we're going to be seeing it uh, at this particular date. I don't believe we're going to see a launch at CES. From my personal standpoint, I believe that AMD are in a really good position for the next six months to 12 months at least, because it's going to take a long time before AMD really face competition again from Intel. Yes, from what we've seen from Intel at their recent uh, conferences, they look very impressive. Uh, generation uh, 13 integrate, uh, discrete GPUs look really cool, but it's really going to come down to Intel to win back the mindshare of gamers who are focused on the value side of the market. And I know I've said this like a hundred times right now, but to my personal opinion, it's really difficult to argue against the sheer value of like a 2600X processor because they just stomp everything in terms of the price performance standpoint. In fact, it's even crazier if you can get really lucky and buy like a 1600X or something like that because from some websites you're still able to get some of those and because they're end of line, they're even cheaper. And you can get like 10, 20, 30, or even 40 US dollars sometimes off of the MSRP, which makes them an absolute steal. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Apologies for the absolute bizarre schedule that I've been keeping over the last couple of days. I know I've said this several times right now, but I just want to repeat it in case you've missed the previous videos. I am in the US. I've largely, he says, with kind of like iffy uh, signals, largely converted to uh, Seattle in terms of the time zone. But I've also been getting over like a flu. I thought originally it was a cold. I pretty much got over those symptoms and then it came back again and was like, oh, hi, you might remember me from the times that you felt really crap. And then basically I've been almost bedridden for the last couple of days. And um, yeah, so that's not been brilliant, but I'm hoping to be semi well enough for Christmas to enjoy it. And I truly wish you all a happy new year, a Merry Christmas. And once again, I thank you all deeply for the support and well, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Videos. I am in the US. I've largely, he says with kind of like iffy uh, signals, largely converted to uh, Seattle in terms of the time zone, but I've also been getting over like a flu. I thought originally it was a cold. I pretty much got over those symptoms and then it came back again and was like, oh, hi. You might remember me from the times that you felt really crap. And then basically I've been almost bedridden for the last couple of days. And um, yeah, so that's not been brilliant, but I'm hoping to be semi well enough for Christmas to enjoy it. And I truly wish you all a happy new year, a Merry Christmas. And once again, I thank you all deeply for the support. And well, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.